Park Industries Web Video Fusion Miter Cuts Part 2 Applying Cuts and Layouts The objectives of this course are to apply the miters and to properly place the parts on a slab. We stopped in video 1 after we identified the difference between an undercut and an overcut miter. We also drew some vertical aprons so that we could get a visual and also use that visual to pull out dimension lines to identify the angle that our miters need to be cut at. For part two, I'm going to start by adding labels to the end instead of our visuals. So I'm going to label this as an overcut, this is an overcut, and then I'm going to label my undercuts as well. This is an undercut, and this is an undercut. This will allow me to delete all of our visual aids from video one. I'm going to delete this vertical, this vertical, and all my dimension lines as well. Now I'm going to take these parts and lay them out on the screen. I'm going to match undercuts to undercuts and overcuts to overcuts. So I'm going to do this by using my join parts, common line cuts, and I'll start with aligning by a blade curve. So if I take this end of this part and align it with this end of this part, I have two overcuts with the same angle aligned next to each other. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align this undercut with this undercut, but because of the miter on this edge and the miter at this edge, I'm also aligning miters, I'm going to leave a distance in between them. I'm going to leave one inch in between these two parts because of the miter. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my undercut, my miter undercut button, and I'm going to set the miter angle 22 and a half degrees, and I'm going to apply an undercut to this and an undercut to this end. As you can see, we have the same familiar red lines as we do on the apron edges. Next, I'm going to apply my overcut, the same angle on this end and this end. Now, as we can see on this, we get a blue line to the outside of the part. The lines that are created with miters, the red and blue lines that are created with miters, represent the bottom of the blade. Before I auto toolpath, I'm going to lay my parts out onto a sheet. Now, one thing that I'm taking into consideration is the length and the over travel of the miter cuts. I'll have to leave a little extra room to get a full miter cut on my apron parts. To explain, I'm going to switch to a different drawing. For a visual reference, I've drawn a 14 and a half inch diameter blade. I've drawn a rectangle with 1.181 or 3cm thickness to represent a piece of stone. I've also taken that line and offset it again by half the material thickness to re represent how thick the material would be if the blade was at a 45 degree angle. I've taken these and moved them up an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the saw blade because the saw blade cuts an eighth of an inch deep. So what we can see is when we see a tool path a tool path represents the middle of the bottom of the blade. When my blade is perpendicular to the material, I need at least four inches, probably closer to five inches of room between the blade and the part so that it doesn't interfere or stop short and use a water jet. When my blade is at a 45 degree angle, I need five inches, so I'm going to say six inches to allow a little extra safety distance between my parts that have miter angles. 
on my part drawing to represent that six inch safety distance that I'll need for my full miter cuts, I'm just simply going to offset six inches this line down. Now I'm going to go move my parts and keep that in mind as a boundary for how far my miter saw blade will travel before it hits my part. I would be comfortable setting my parts right about there. And finally, I will go and auto tool path. One thing that's very important that I enter the proper material thickness. I'll go select all the geometries that I want to be cut. I do not need to select any of the red or the blue lines. Once an overcut or undercut or apron miter has been attached, it will always remain attached to that piece of geometry. Now, as you can see in my left window, in the operation window, I have finish passes, which represent any straight cut. And when I see a roughing pass, that is an angled or miter cut. So I have many roughing passes showing me all of the miter cuts. And of course, I would probably choose to combine my cuts and to order them properly in my operations window. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.